Hello, I'm Lauren Ackerman of Ackerman Family Vineyards, and I'm here today with Leo Tellez, our winemaker, who's been working with us since 2019 to make our beautiful wines here at the Stonehaven Vineyard. I wanted to let you all know that this is a very special fall release for us, because you probably remember 2020 was a very difficult year for Napa Valley. That was a year we had some fires later in the season, but unfortunately, earlier in the season, we had some outdoor outside fires from another area and that created a smoke taint problem which unfortunately led to us not being able to harvest. So because this is a special year and it also celebrating 20 years of having our wines in the market, we are giving all of our club members an opportunity to have essentially a vertical of our previous wines starting in the year 2013 through 2017. We've never done this before. It's an exciting time, and we're really thrilled to be able to celebrate our 20th anniversary with these four beautiful wines. Leo? Yeah, thank you, Lauren, for the intro. Uh, Leo Tellez, winemaker here for Ackerman Family Vineyards. Uh, the lovely backdrop that you see is our Stonehaven Vineyard. Um, we're sitting around just shy of 11 acres. Um, so about the vineyard, we're located as you know, in Coombsville, ABA, just east of downtown Napa. Um, it's uh, a great um, site just because we have uh, those diurnal shifts here and the proximity to the bay. So we still have warm days, but very cool uh, evenings. Like this morning, right, Lauren? We yeah. had some fog this morning. That Typical didn't... for this time of year. Yeah, so it's a beautiful <clears throat> September uh, afternoon. Uh, we have great soils here. We have a gentle slope. So we have a vineyard that starts from the top and slopes down to the bottom to a, a um, small creek that is seasonal. Uh, it's rushing during the, the fall, but in the spring it's completely dry. Uh, we have one clone of Cabernet. It's called uh, 337 uh, on one uh, 10R rootstock. So we dissect the vineyard from Bottom, from top to bottom, and uh, this allows us to control the maturity of the seeds and the, and the tannin and the flavor profile, um, which makes it a prized uh, vineyard. Uh, transitioning into the 2013 vintage, uh, Lauren, 2013, uh, I have fond memories uh, almost a decade ago, or yes, a decade ago, I can't exactly. believe it. Uh -huh. Well, th that vintage, uh, it was a great growing season. It was uh, plenty of rainfall in, in the fall. And once spring came, uh, spring uh, bud break, late March, early October. And it was just a textbook uh, vintage. So what I mean by that is no rainfall during the spring and summer. Just really warm, dry Mediterranean climate, which allows us to grow these grapes and ripen them and harvest them late September, early October to late October. So mm -hmm. we had a window of four to six weeks to really decide when we wanted to harvest. So that's just a, a luxury in itself. Mm -hmm. um, so the 13 vintage being celebrated by its vintage, the growing conditions were ideal. And that's why it's fun to be able to re-release it for our members this year as one of the four wines that we're re-releasing re for 2023. 20, uh, what we also are re-releasing the 15 and the 17 vintages. And what I remember about that, the 15 was a little bit cooler, a uh, little bit more uh, rain that particular year, but also was a wonderful vintage. And because of that coolness, we harvested a little bit later as well. And that particular wine is its age has become even more uh, beautiful, deep characteristics to it that I think a lot of our members who have tried it before, when it was younger, have uh, really resonated with. And the 2017, that was also an unusual year. It was a warmer year, but it was a perfect harvest. And unfortunately, a lot of people remember the 17 vintage for the fires. But in our case, we had already harvested our vineyard and everything was already in the tank being fermented prior to those fires for the fires. But in our case, we had already harvested our vineyard and everything was already in the tank being fermented prior to those fires. 
So we are one of the few lucky ones that are able to have that perfect harvest and that perfect vintage in that particular year. So I'm excited to have that come back out for our members this year because it was a great season, great harvest up until unfortunately those fires. So for the fall release, uh, we have a variety of wines. Uh, some of our are aged like the 2013. Uh, ageability in wine, Lauren, for me, I love aged wines. Uh, it's a testament to the vineyard, to the vintage, and also the people behind the wines. So for me, anytime you get to try an aged wine, it's, 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 it's very special. It celebrates uh, the vintage, time and place, and the people. So for me, uh, there's some qualities that are different than a newer wine. So mm -hmm. younger wines uh, tend to have you know big, bold fruit, dark fruit profiles, um, more on the heavy to medium body um, in terms of tannin and mouthfeel. Hi, cowboy. This is <laughs> cowboy, the vineyard cat. <laughs> so uh, he, he loves aged wine. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I can tell uh, he's been hovering around. So, so again, the aged wines, you can also see the color. This is the 17, Lauren. So yeah. it's still very dark. There's no sign of age. But the 13... I had uh, a chance to try the 13 vintage. Uh, you have more of a, a brick red uh, hue on the outside rim. So that's an indicator of aged wine. Also the fruit profile isn't, it's more of a, a, a tertiary. What tertiary means is just aged characteristics. Mm -hmm. So you have these very delicate aromas of uh, aged or, or dried berries, uh, dried cherries, dried cranberries which you, um, it's an indicator of age in a wine. So also the mouthfeel is very silky smooth. It, tannins are softer. You still have the nice acidity, but it just, it's a real treat because in it in itself, it just, uh, it, it's an experience um, because it's, it's super delicate and could pair well with a lot of foods, uh, not necessarily steak i would say but more something more on the nuance side of of things but um it's it's definitely an experience and and wines that i really really uh love to to drink and i think those also one thing that we know too with our particular wines sometimes the corks as they age and such you know we have to use what is an also we want to show them what the also is and this is what we use when we have an older bottle of wine it's just a little bit of a a safety check to be able to pull the cork out more completely because sometimes you know corks age faster than the wine itself and so having an also is an important uh, part of it and I think a lot of our members we've actually been giving them ossos over the years as well so um, good thing to have on hand for those older wines as well. Yeah this is a very important tool uh, as it hugs the outer um, um, structure of the bottle so in, in terms of uh, room, using it also properly, cut the foil, but also hug the, the wall of the cork and the bottle. That way you could um, gently um, push it through and wiggle it through, and that way you can have the cork intact. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a, with a bottle that the cork uh, breaks. It's, it's a normal, it's a natural product. So, uh, you know, some wines that are, 10 plus years, uh, the cork becomes a little fragile, but a, just a kind reminder, always have your wines aged with the wine on its side. So the wine and the cork uh, will be uh, moist. moist. Uh, yeah. If it's not, it'll break and it'll be brittle. So um, that's another kind of a friendly reminder, if you will. But um, also, you know, the aged wines in Coombsville, you have these longer growing seasons, Lauren, and you have this beautiful acidity in the wine, which preserves the wines for, for a long time. So I've had the, you know, um, the privilege to try some of these older wines that were made off this property, and it's a testament to, to the site and to the AVA. Well, it's in, you know, in the spirit of Bordeaux, that's kind of the way that we looked at these wines. Is not only are they wonderful and beautiful and, and delicious when they're young but they do tend to age very well and that's a factor of being in Coombsville is where where we are in the cooler area 
with the longer hang time typically and the fact that we're usually harvesting three to four weeks after everyone else up the valley kind of gives us that uh, sense of, of the European way of, of doing things, which is kind of a fun way for us. And that's my personal preference too. So with these verticals that we were, re this vertical we were re releasing this year, we're, I think you're gonna discover that this is kind of a, a beautiful thing to be able to experience. It captures all those different years and their particular uniqueness because nothing changes except the weather. The farming stays pretty much the same. And so every year is gonna be different because of just that time of place and temperature and rain and all of that every year. And it's been an honor to produce these wines for 20 plus years, uh, actually a little longer than that now, but um, selling and producing uh, these, so, these beautiful Ackerman family vineyards now for since 2003, which is our first commercial vintage. And um, I'm grateful for the continued support from our members and all of our supporters out there. Uh, it's been a wonderful journey, wonderful uh, experience for me. Having you on board with oh, us nice. as well, Leo, has made it even more fun. And uh, Cowboy seems to enjoy himself too. So that's it from us. And we are really excited for you to try these wines this year. Thanks so much. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Bye.